Do you know the platform genre kick off with Donkey Kong in 1981? And the Super Mario Bros. set the standard with its side-scrolling gameplay. In this hack, we'll be using the Godot engine to build a 2D platformer. First, hit up the Godot website and snag the latest build. Let's get this game on. Greetings! We will start in a Godot game engine with the creation of a new project. Go to create button and click once. In the create new project window, we will first create one folder for all of your game projects. So go to project path, path, browse, click once, find micro button, create a new folder, click once, write it something like my game projects. Click OK, select this as a current folder. And now you will have in a project path your folder for a games. Then we will write a project name, for example, 2D platforma. For a renderer, we will select mobile. And then you need to click on create and, and edit. Now let me explain you Godot environment for making game, games. You have a main menu here with a scene, project debug, editor and help option, scene window, file system window, main design window, output window, debugger, audio, animation and shader editor, windows, inspector window and micro buttons for running your scene. We will mainly use this uh, design window in a 2D design uh, uh, view. We will use this scene window to create uh, new uh, nodes, new scene and arrange nodes. In a file system, uh, we will um, use it to arrange our files and to add uh, some files we needed for a game. Let's add the game assets to our uh, file system. Resize the main window of the game engine. Find your folder and drag and drop it into the file system. Folder with the files you will find on the link I provided in the description of this video. In the central window we have one uh, empty and unsaved game scene. You can see the game space here, defined. If you want to zoom it, just use Control plus or Control minus. You can use this micro buttons also for zooming. For the panning, you can use this micro button or G. So for the panning and for the default select mode, use Q. Let's start game design with adding first node to this game scene. This will be a root node. Click, click once here in a scene window to add a child node. Control plus A. We will select a node called node, which are defaultly selected here. Click once on create. Every node, uh, when you put it inside the game scene, uh, get uh, uh, his position. Now uh, we will add another node with, with the same uh, way, so control A. This node will be static body, static body. Static body will be some kind of 2D node for a 2D physical process. And uh, every node you add to your scene gets some kind of initial position here. So this is some kind of initial position for the node. 
uh, origin. So this is uh, a, a, a left top corner of your uh, game uh, space, as you see here. This position uh, can be seen in inspector window if you found, find node 2D branch transform, you will see the position 0 and 0. If your node is, for example, at some other position, you can easily reset it here to the, to the initial 0, 0 position. This static uh, body will be moved. So select here move mode W. We will move it, move it somewhere in a lower part of our game scene and we will add another node to the static body uh, so first select the static body and add a node this node will be collision shape so right collision and find collision shape 2d collision shape 2d uh, will be child node of the static body and we need to go to inspector window and set a shape in collision shape 2D branch for this node. Shape will be rectangular, so new rectangular shape 2D. Now we have a shape for, uh, for this uh, static body. And uh, to uh, change this shape, go to select mode and uh, select one of these points and move it. Now I will show you how to add a node at exact space. We will add a character body node. So go to your design window, somewhere above the collision shape of the static body, click the right mouse button and select add node here. We will position this node in a search box, write something like character. And select the character body 2D. Remember, or to all 2D nodes are light blue colored. So click once on create. And we have this character body here. We will add a child node to the character body. This child node will be collision shape and the collision shape will be, so go to shapes, collision shape will be capsule shape and uh, you can select a move mode and put it somewhere here. Now select your character body. Character body is usually used for a main character in a game, we need to save this scene. Go to Scene and Save Scene, Control plus S. Now we will start this scene in uh, using this Run Character Scene micro button or F6. And uh, in this scene, we see only the game space. To see a collision shape, we will go to Debug window, select Visible Collision Shapes, and now when we start a game, we see a collision shapes. We are working with a collision shape, as you see. It is uh, called uh, Game Prototyping, and we will continue with uh, adding a GD script to one of our nodes. So select the character body node and uh, uh, click uh, once on the right mouse button so to get the context menu and find the option called attach script. This uh, can be done also with this micro button here, attach script. And uh, we have uh, now this dialog attach node script with uh, some kind of uh, template. Character body 2D have uh, pre-designed template with some kind of coding. We will not uh, use it uh, right now, just to show you a few things, but you can uh, put it uh, in your uh, screen. So just click load, nothing more.
you will get uh, some kind of script like this and uh, now we will uh, change a few things here to make it uh, simple for you to understand what is a GD script and uh, how to use it. First, uh, we will use some kind of functions. Functions are uh, part of a code with uh, code lines. Simple function can look like this. Means function exists but do nothing. Extends mean, means that this script is extension of this class of this object or a node so this is extension of the character body 2d and now we will write some code lines here to write a code line one important thing is to start it with a tab space this will be done automatically if you uh, start from this function position but if you are in a code uh, sometimes you will need to set this tab for example uh, coding, if you write coding like this, uh, it, uh, it isn't a valid coding. So expected indentation block after function de declaration. If you press tab here, you will have correctly written function. We will now start coding movement for our uh, character using character body 2D and uh, property called velocity. So we will set uh, the velocity epsilon, which are the part of the vector two variable to one hundred. Okay, and we will now test it. So velocity for this object is set to one hundred, and we will use one method called move and slide. This method is influenced by velocity variable. So let's see what will be uh, vertical velocity of this object. So uh, velocity will be towards uh, down. Let me show you what will happen if value is negative, as you see here. So with this, we create some kind of gravity for this object. Second thing, uh, we will try to create one variable and the variables are on constant data. This variable will solve direction of uh, movement. We will use input. This uh, method uh, resolve input uh, from devices, for example, keyboard input. Uh, and we will use uh, F access and uh, two variables will be put inside one variable for a left keyboard key. And second input for a right keyboard K. And just to show you what is happening, I will explain you. So this direction will have different value if uh, we press left or, or right arrow keys or if we didn't press a thing. And now I will uh, do it like this. So I will print something to output window. This is output window here. And this will be direction value. So let's see what is happening. In the output value, we, uh, we have value of zero. So uh, we don't have input for keyboard. If we press a left, now I'm holding the left arrow k minus one, right arrow k one. It is good. We can use this. Uh, so if direction, this means if we have a direction. So if we have value different than zero, we can influence this velocity and velocity will influence move and slide method. But this time we will do velocity X 
and uh, we will use this direction value and multiply by 100 for example multiply. and let's see what will we get so movement to the one and to the other side I'm pressing le uh, right, right, left, but uh, this can be improved. So we will use else. Means if direction is not, direction can be one or minus one. But if we don't have this direction value, so if direction is zero, zero. This uh, I'm copy pasting it. Uh, velocity of the X can be zero. So uh, this can stop the movement of this object. Uh, now I will change a few things for better, better visibility. And I will use uh, this syntax uh, for, uh, for engine to uh, check what kind of variable is this and to set it properly. Now I am pressing right. So I have a movement when the arrow key is pressed and stopping when nothing is pressed. This will be good beginning for our uh, prototype testing. Now we can start by setting a background. For this we will use the files we previously created. This file are in uh, 2D platformer files, so go to game background, find the uh, game background one PNG file and just drag and drop it inside the scene. We will then change our uh, game scene width and height according to this image. Go to texture, click once on image to see uh, width and height 1920, 1080. Go to project window, project settings, and write it to the width 90, 20, and, and 80 to the height. Close. Uh, this will uh, change uh, width and height of, um, of a game scene go to this uh, select this game background image go to offset turn off centered for the image and uh, go to the transform and reset position to the origin so zero zero now as you see uh, this uh, image are set uh, in uh, width and height of our uh, game scene this is good we will use another node select the root node add node call it the parallax parallax uh, parallax uh, background so we use parallax background node and we will add another node call it parallax layer so layer node for a background and then select drag and drop the background image to the parallax layer to have this kind of uh, hierarchy we can test this okay if you have uh, a gameplay window uh, bigger than uh, ide you can uh, uh, close it in a taskbar and now we will change the position of the static body this is our static body here we can change it so move mode w somewhere down there and the position of the character body also move mode somewhere here select the static body we will change the collision shape for the static body so collision shape go to shapes and we will change this rectangular shape to new boundary shape this shape will be limitless in uh, 2d space the important things to this uh, red arrow 
points to our um, game space up we can put it somewhere like here now let's see what we get okay good we will add another node for this character body called the uh, camera node and camera for a 2d called camera 2d select create and when you select this camera 2d node uh, we can a little bit change the space this is the space uh, which camera lens cover and uh, let's test what we have now okay this is visible now when we move the camera will move also as you see here you can make some additional changes to the camera position like this maybe and now go to the parallax layer and we will uh, add the option for mirroring for this you know to need you need to know with of your uh, background image uh, let me check it again so this is our background image 90 20 so the mirroring will be 90 20 and what is mirroring i think i can show you for uh, to for better understanding mirroring of image will be mirroring of this background image so when we move to the right Bangra background image mirrors and uh, we have a feeling like endless movement also we have uh, created uh, this uh, this floor with a boundary boundary collision shape one other thing we can do right now is to add some visibility to the character body so select the character body add a node we will try to find the node uh, with a mesh uh, so this can be mesh instance to the node create and go to the mesh in inspector window and find some kind of mesh mesh are visible in a game window uh, we can use capsule mesh because our uh, collision shape is capsule we will use it uh, just uh, for uh, for uh, for a visibility so just for a visibility this mesh instance is maybe not visible now let me see uh, what uh, okay here this is our mesh instance so we can uh, maybe try to change a scale to something like this maybe okay our collision shape can be visible now we will put collision shape below here just to see how big collision shape is and then we can uh, we can work with the mesh instance to change it accordingly maybe like this you don't need to be uh, precise but uh, we can use a move mode maybe something like this okay okay uh, now we will go to debug with the collision shape will be turned off and uh, let's see what we get now so now we have some kind of character moving and we have set the background as a parallax layer now we can improve our uh, script uh, for a character body 2d we have defined gravity here uh, we can use some kind of comments We have defined gravity, 
movement for the left and right. So this will be movement for the left and right, and this is uh, for a stopping when you don't move to left and right, and move and slide method, of course. Uh, we can change gravity uh, using uh, delta value, so we'll write it like this. Uh, velocity epsilon will be will be will be plus equal. Plus equal means the value will be increased gradually using uh, variables like this. We will multiply multiply <laughs> by delta. And let's see how gravity look now. Gravity is now a little bit uh, interesting. Uh, we will uh, now we can add jumping. We can add the jumping. Uh, so if input uh, input uh, is uh, is action is action is action. Is action pressed? Uh, we can use up arrow. For example, this is predefined, and we can use it. So, if you press up arrow key, something for velocity epsilon can be changed, and this will be. Let me try like this. We can change it. So, arrow up. And we have some kind of jump. This jump can be can be more like this. So now we have basic movement, and the movement can be a little bit faster. Here is the speed. We can change it to speed. Speed. This can be variable. Variable speed can be, can be, can be, can be, can be something like this. Okay, let me see what we have now. So we have a little bit, uh, maybe the speed is uh, too much, maybe not. As you see now, we have jumping and we have movement left, right. The main characteristic of... Uh, all platformer game are platforms, and we will, uh, we will explain this next. Let's learn how to create platforms. We will use uh, tail map for this. Add a new node, find the tail map, and then find the tail map layer node. We will use the second one, tail map layer. Click once on create. Now. Uh, we will need to create a set of tails for our uh, game scene. Go to Inspector window, Tail Set, New Tail Set. Find the Tail Set window here, click once, and click here once on this plus sign, select Atlas Textures, and then find your uh, uh, folder uh, 2D platform files, select the Tails folder, select the first tail and then hold shift select last. Uh, we will use all of these tails, click once to open. Uh, we have dialog about auto creation of the Atlas textures, click yes. We have the two uh, tabs here, tails patterns, we will use tails, we have 18 tails here to use. These tails uh, can be put into the into the our scene. Go to tail map and select first tail. So select the first tail in the tail map. Then uh, select here the option called paint. Select the first corner, hold left mouse button and select last corner. Now you see we can enter the tail into the screen, but this tail is too large for us. What can we do? We can, uh, we can go to the transform, scale, and change scale for 
our needs. For example, 0, zero 03. Now we can use this. How to put this uh, single tail into the screen? Find the place when you want to put it. We want to set it somewhere close to this collision shape. For example, here. And click once left mouse button. Now tail is on the place. Select another tail. Uh, in the tail map, of course. And hold left to the right corner. Now we will use a line for putting uh, these tails. So remember second tail. We'll put it here. And if you hold the left mouse button, you can write a line of a tails. As you see here. Next thing I want to teach you is how to select this tail inside the window. Go to the selection S and uh, select with the rectangular this part. But if we select it all, we will have this part here. So we need to uh, change selection like this. Control C, Control V, paste. And now we have this uh, copy pasted. Put it wherever you want. For example, put it here. And just click left mouse button. Uh, you have this put it here. And now we can uh, create some kind of platform with the knowledge we now have. So select this uh, paint what you want to use. So if you want to use this, paint this. And the tail map, use paint D. And uh, put it where you want it. For example, for example, this. Select other you want to paint. For example, we can paint a line here. Paint it like a line. Select third one. Again, you need to select what you want to use. We will put only one here. And now we have a simple platform here. We can use these platforms with a selection. So selection, copy, paste, put it where you want it. For example, here. Paste again, and here, for example, or here. Good. Now to the selection again, we will need more of this. Copy, paste, and select a, a place. For example, like this. Now we have platforms, but this is only tails. Only collision shape we have is here. So let's test it. Now we have platforms, so three platforms. Uh, platforms cannot be used because this is only tails, as you see here. Tails. But uh, we can paint a collision shape over the tail and then uh, this, uh, this tail can be used uh, with a collision shape. Uh, go to tail set and uh, go to select paint, select proper editor. So paint proper editor, no physics layers. So we don't have a physics layers for, uh, for uh, these tails. We need to go to our uh, layer physics. Uh, let me tail map. This is tail map physics. It's okay. It is okay. Physics, navigation, rendering, everything is okay. Tail set. 
physics layer. Uh, we need to add a physics layer in a tail set. So you need to select a tail set, physics layer, add element. Uh, this will be only one layer. Now we can go to paint, select a proper layer, physics layer. In this physics layer, uh, you can write collision shape. Uh, you can paint a collision shape. So this is point tool, uh, polygon tool. This is uh, for uh, for uh, pointing this space. We will not pointing. We will only uh, paint a collision shape. For this first tail collision shape will be like this. So for this line and here. Uh, also down there. I think this is okay. For a second one, we can only uh, paint it above and below. We are painting collision shape. And for the third one, we can paint it like this. So this will be collision shape. Good, let's test this. Now we jump and we have collision shape. We also have collision shape and we have platforms. Important things here was the platforms. Now we have a most important element for the platforms, which are platform. You can uh, create uh, interesting things uh, with tail map. If you have options in a tail set, for example, uh, we have options here for some kind of uh, of uh, spring, uh, and uh, we can put it here. Uh, the idea is uh, tail map. We need a tail map for this. The idea is uh, never to put over something. So this will be over something, as you see here always try to put it on a clean space for example we can select one part here delete it and then we can put uh, this uh, as here or as a line like this and then you can uh, make changes you like to make for example, you can select uh, this and uh, always paint the tail. Put it here. You see here only visible when when we are close. You can make it make it precise also. And on this side, we will use this one. So this one here, as you see. And this one is for this side. Okay. You can uh, create many different things. For example, you can create other type of platforms. Uh, for example, if we use this element, we can create a platform like this. see this platform will be a little different than previously created one and this is the way if you need collision you need to paint a collision so this is the the the, the simplest way to use tail map layer now we will add a character uh, image for our character select a character body 2d add a new node animation write animation animated sprite 2d node create it go to inspector window of this animation sprite frames new sprite frames and when you create it just click on sprite frames to open animation frames window we have one default animation we will add another one so first animation will be idle 
Second animation will be walk. So we'll have two animation. Select first idle animation. Go to micro button add, add frames from sprite. Select player character, open. Uh, here uh, in the vertical uh, in the vertical uh, uh, right one so for the vertical frames uh, right one for a horizontal 12 size 54 85 this can be good offset maybe one maybe zero let's try with the one offset is uh, Offset is from above, so let's try with a zero. This is offset from above. This is offset from a left. And uh, because we are creating first uh, idle animation, we can pick uh, some of this uh, animation for this. We can try this animation to see how this look like. Not bad, not bad. So this can be animation for the idle. Now we need animation for the walk. Also similar drill. For the walk we will use more frames. One, two, shift, drag, move, five. So one, two, three, four, six frames, add. This is not perfect, so first few frames are okay. These frames have one dot here. So not so extremely perfect, but good for uh, education tutorial. And this can uh, be used to animate a movement. Now we have two animation. Select animated sprite. We are going to the move mode. And we will change a transform to 0607, maybe 08, and move it somewhere here. Uh, mesh is instance will be good to uh, toggle visibility to hidden. Now we have uh, animation here, but uh, this animation need to be activated somehow. So go to scripting. Now we need to do some uh, GD script lines. Direction. So we will work with the direction. If direction is toward one side, uh, let's use the reference of animated sprite. Select, hold left mouse button, move, drag, drop. This is a reference for uh, for uh, this node. We'll use animation property. And first animation we use will be walk. Uh, also, uh, it will be good to somehow uh, flip horizontally uh, flip horizontally this, uh, let's try with false here. So, and animation need to start somehow. We will use play method. Play. I'm using enter to finish this uh, suggested code. In a situation where uh, direction is one, we will use L if so if uh, direction is minus one L if else if L if means else if uh, we can use this code lines and change a few things flip horizontal may be true here animation is walking animation is playing it's okay it's okay but what when uh, we need to stop when we need to stop, we will not use flipping. Flipping will stay same. And the animation will be idle. So animation will be idle. And uh, we, we don't need play here. Let's try with this. So we have character in idle position, moving right, moving left very good 
jumping very good what uh, you can do to uh, tune this animation uh, there are a few things so when the animated sprite is selected you can change a speed scale of a movement to something you 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 want uh, also you can uh, work with the scale and uh, if you want some uh, better uh, collision shape uh, position go and move collision shape whatever you think it's good for the game okay now let's uh, play test as you see here we have some objects uh, in a game everything looks okay now we can move either side we can jump we have platforms which are main thing uh, for a platform game if you want to add some object you have objects here in your resource folder add them uh, directly so just select object you like for example crate and put it somewhere in the in the scene uh, obj it is good if you have more object is good to put them under one node so add a node 2d and put all object under this node like this for example uh, if uh, you want to change something like uh, transform work on scale put uh, the scale you think is is proper for a game uh, this object will not interact with a player so you can add objects as you like i add a few things here okay other things you can do to improve visibility is to work with the parallax background you can add more parallax layer and uh, you have in a game background you have different layers here we use this image game background but now you can use the layers you can use different layers let me show you uh, this is without any layer first layer is a sky here this is sky png you can use it and the second layer uh, can be something like this rocks and other level of rocks and clouds uh, one good thing with all of this uh, don't remember uh, don't forget when you uh, use another layer it's good to copy uh, or uh, duplicate it so select parallax layer and then duplicate if you want to do something if you are doing uh, this manually don't forget to set mirroring here for effect of different movement as you see here uh, some kind have different movement for example clouds see here clouds and maybe you see uh, two uh, level layers of rocks movement in the background looking cool in a game you can make these layers as much as you can five to seven is recommended uh, uh, what uh, you can do you can uh, tune this scale data for example my first parallax layer in a scale one but uh, second layer is in a scale 1.05 so some kind of different uh, layer uh, and movement of a mirroring what is good for improved playability in a game you can work on some pickable objects for your uh, player like uh, coin, coins or some kind of props needed in a game you can increase playability also uh, with uh, using of uh, various obstacles for your player uh, different level platforms uh, some uh, other possibility for uh, move, movement and uh, different uh, 
uh, type of obstacles. Also, you can work on story to add some story elements in your platformer and uh, to change a theme. So to have levels and each level to have a different uh, visual, audio and gameplay themes. When you are ready to create a stand standalone game for your uh, operating system, go to project, project uh, export and find the add button. Select your operating system, for example, Windows desktop. You will have one warning here. But important details are the name of your game here and uh, you can go to export project. Click once. Uh, this export will be saved in a path location with exe extension. You can export it with debug or uh, without debug if you want to export it and create standalone game. Click once on save. This is all uh, for uh, this uh, tutorial uh, making platformer uh, video game. See you in the next one.